Um, so we saw uh, this week top a thousand yeah. banks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Interesting, interesting. We saw um, Equity Bank. It ranked position 39 globally on yeah. return um, on assets, position 71 on return on capital, position 149 on soundness. Um, uh, that is the capital assets to assets ratio. Yeah. Overall, tier one capital base, um, overall tier one capital base, 22nd in Africa, 761 globally. Let me, let me just do my coffee. <laughs> they deserve it. <laughs> wow, Equity Bank. We've, before we've discussed the journey of Equity yeah, Bank, yeah, yeah. the way in around 2003-2004 when Equity was, you know, venturing, venturing out mm -hmm. as as um as a commercial bank. Yeah. At that time, Barclays Bank, today known as ABSA, yeah. mm -hmm. and Standard Chartered Bank yeah. controlled 55% of the profit market share. Yeah. Today it's a different story. <laughs> Very, different. Very different. Equity Bank. How much what's its market um share? Um, I think it's it's around. Uh, let me just do a quick check. But uh, I would like to know that because something? they're looking at something? expanding and they they really have. Oh, something interesting that Equity did that. actually. Mm -hmm. right. Equity will be sponsoring more than two hundred business people from Kenya. They'll be going for a um, a business business trip to the DRC to you know, survey the place, look at what's happening, the businesses that they could, inv could invest there, and equity is going to give them the credit to do that. Mm -hmm. they, this is in partnership with the, the Ministry of, the of um, Industrialization yeah. and Enterprise, CSBT Minor. Yeah. I really liked this idea. You know, they're yeah. creating business for themselves in a yeah, way. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, yes, of course, when we'll you spend go some there, few coins to take this them. guy. Yeah. So yeah. they'll be having trips, you know, in Bujibai, oh. in Bujimai, in Kivu, yeah. in Goma, yeah. you know, where mm. uh, their flights now <laughs> with Jumbo Jet. Yeah. So this is really interesting, considering how entrepreneurial Kenyans are. Mm -hmm. You know, people will get there, see, oh, this place, what does it need? Needs a shop for school uniforms, needs a restaurant, needs what? And Wikit is going to be the funder. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And definitely those will be the clients. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I, on a question of market share, okay, this data is as of 2019, mm. but at the time it was KCB had 13%, 13.89, and okay. then equity 10.24%, with NCBA just close behind. Profit market share? Um, profit, like oh, the chunk of the about, market. Oh, control. chunk of the market. Oh, yeah. okay, great. That's so great. 10%? 10, 10 no, I mean, yeah, this that was is, by this assets, is, I think. This is when? Oh, by assets. Yeah, like 2019. this is of 2019. 2019. Yeah, yeah. So... I think has equity overtaken I KCB you said, by? I thought you said 2012. 2019. Oh, but equity crossed the one trillion. Yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, KCB did that this year. Oh, equity closed yesterday at uh, 49.9. Um, shillings or yes, at the And now that you talked about a stock price, Safarico went to 40. Yeah, see that was just response to what is happening in Ethiopia. Yeah, yeah. Could you an overstretched um, statement, but. 38, it might, it's looking very promising. Yeah, it could is, easily get to 38. Yeah, it can easily get to the 38, but then yeah. let's talk in three months. Let's talk in six months. Oh, okay. Where will it be? Okay. Yeah. And by the way, the wine so in, 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 in Ethiopia. And, the, and, and our issues, I think, I, our issues actually with that. Okay, yeah. this is a big detour, but our big yeah, issue was yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the main concerns was on the methodology of how they arrived. There was a lot, at, a lot of assumptions that were not making sense. And we actually went ahead and looked at Safaricom's number. Yeah, literally, they for, because the IBX has assumed a cost of debt at, of twelve yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah, looking at Safaricom's book, they are implied twelve for seventeen. After tax cost of debt of oh, okay. twelve percent, okay, yeah. which means an actual cost of debt of around seventeen percent. Mm -hmm. We look at Safaricom's debt, which they usually barely have any debt. Yeah. But last year they borrowed around forty four billion. Yeah. I think that was Kenya shillings. Yes. That's yeah. little money to them anyway. Yeah. And I believe that was to to sort out the license. Uh, uh, payment in Ethiopia. Yeah. Of which yeah. they repaid Actually it was, yeah. Of which they repaid thirty eight billion ah. already. So they have Kidogo, Around, uh, uh, yeah, less than 10. Yeah, million. there's a small cabal. Yeah. yeah, but the interest that they, uh, their interest expense for the year um, was around 1.6 billion, which comes to around 3%. So, that's that's yeah. quite significant from what they from, had. Yeah, yeah, from that 12%. Mm -hmm. And that, just that short difference makes a difference in their valuation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that 38 moves to 40, 40 something. The so again, so it's not even what how the, market, the assumptions their methodology, this, yeah, 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 and how they went about every, um, getting their numbers. You know, you've mentioned about the market reaction to what is happening in Ethiopia, and yeah. the issue has really uh, 
exacerbated you know mm-hmm. yeah. far much more than people thought and this is this is because i i, I had been telling most of my friends my friends that the thought was your president <laughs> <laughs> the unrest yeah. which is now which has now come out as a civil war mm. is actually is, is a I don't know I'm not sure about I don't know the, the civic the, 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 the civic I don't know that it's escalated to that level <laughs> no, it's, yeah but, but I mean it's getting better by the way no no, no. do exactly. you know what come on the issue why the reason why it went up so <laughs> fast this is because the war has been massively underreported mm-hmm. very little information has been coming out of Ethiopia yeah. so people w- didn't know much yeah. so people were shocked that ah these forces are, are, are getting to Addis Ababa you know this is yeah. getting serious you know it, it feels like some some Idi Amin stuff that was yeah, happening yeah. you know mm-hmm. you know and, and and all and all bro i'm telling you now i think this is i don't want to i don't want to say this but say i it. think this is good for kenya in some way eh okay maybe you should have said that <laughs> you actually i get why, i think why, i can see why where kigen is going with this yeah. Yeah. because i mean this in it's it's very unfortunate for ethiopia and i hope things really get better because i mean people dying and all that mm. it's, it's 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 just not good you know just looking at how ethiopia's economy has been performing in mm. the last couple of years and yeah. the kenya's how kenya has been performing yeah. and generally the competition between the two countries in terms of in investment in yeah. terms of fdis and yeah. everything yeah. Fla- many flower farm were move, many flower farms were moving from Naivasha they were going to Ethiopia you know and the cost of electricity and everything was cheaper i think this should be a wake up call to kenya yeah. to show them that hey this is how bad you are okay this is how things were so the fact that ethiopia is experiencing what is experiencing at the moment yeah. and now you're getting an upper hand tells you that in the past years you have been quite uncompetitive compared to your neighbors yeah uh, basically yeah ethiopia have been more aggressive um in terms of creating even the opportunities zones yeah and, i've seen that yeah uh, which has taken attention away from kenya. from kenya even it being a regional hub for transport with ethiopian airlines yeah. people choosing to transit through bole Uh, as opposed to international uh, airport yeah, as opposed to JKIA. JKIA and such uh, Kigali is also coming out quite strongly absolutely they, they had um, a partnership with um, Qatar Airways yeah <laughs> so <laughs> you say that again <laughs> I like how you pronounce it <laughs> Qatar I like it it's not yeah. Qatar because <laughs> me I'm like Qatar yeah uh, Qatar but anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like how aggressive they are Rwanda is also quite uh picking up right now mm-hmm. even if you to look at prices of Rwanda uh, it's quite cheaper compared to um KQ. KQ so Ethiopia is making that step yeah. um and, but still many investors i think were still concerned with um how much like the economic not the economic the political situation there yeah. uh, and the democracy levels um in Ethiopia which is making people a little bit more wary so now with this happening yeah it now becomes even bigger but yeah. uh-huh. what kigen was saying it, yeah. kenya now stands a chance to be more aggressive like take advantage and of take this. advantage of it and uh market but but you see we're we? at a comfort who are we who are we? Because we, who, we are focusing on elections who are we comparing ourselves with you're comparing ourselves with tanzania uganda those are okay peers who we are significantly above we have we have and we trade a lot with them far yeah. much more than any other person mm. yeah and our, econ- other country. our economy is significantly stronger than theirs yeah, yeah sure so to some extent okay, to a large extent we are lax you know we relaxed and we don't look at the opportunities that there are it's it's unfortunate that it has to it takes um a whole war in ethiopia for us to see gaps no the gaps were like we could see what we're, we're, doing. we're just we're saying glaring. it's a big opportunity that we can take advantage of but then for this it means you need to have been prepared to move quickly in case of anything but no if you want it so badly we will no, but we do not way. like now right now that's not our focus <laughs> no, yeah, like, we have people <laughs> elections yeah. oh my people um yeah. stock of the week yeah oh that's quick okay <laughs> <laughs> or oh, you do you have something in mind that before we go to stock of the week no 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 i was just saying i can't um, do stock of the week no like i think just for our viewers out of just 
on when you were talking about the equity being listed in the top yeah. 1000 banks uh-huh, yeah. i think out of just curiosity would be or just it's a fun fact let's say uh-huh. um the top 3 banks globally surprise surprise many people I'm sure I'm surprised. My first guess was, you know, JP Morgan, you know, American yeah. banks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, Probably HSBC. Yeah. yeah. So the top three banks are actually Chinese banks. Yeah. Uh, so we have the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, uh, which I think has funded a number of our projects in Canada. Oh, oh, okay. I think so. Yeah. I think the Exim Bank has been big on us. Yeah. Um, China Construction the, Bank, Corporation, project. Agricultural Bank of China. Those are the top three. Oh, actually, top four. Bank of China, number four. Wow. Yeah. And then, so the fifth one is the first American bank, JP Morgan Chase. I think this is a reflection of, you know, the, of course, of the, how China's the taken scales up a lot of, of, of the global it, financial uh, markets and everything. Yeah. 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 China's yeah. taken up a lot of um, countries that used to trade with the US. Yeah. So yeah. Especially their aggression yeah. in, in, in Africa, especially. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah, and then also the return on assets, which is I think another interesting metric. Like if you were to look at the what's it called? Um by region. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is it by region? Um because on return to assets, equity ranked thirty nine. Which is very That's good. Thirty nine yeah, chief. <laughs> yeah. How many African banks are on top of that? So as to get a picture of what equity is performing in Africa because you can't compare it with European banks. Okay, you can, but but you know, but you know, in 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 developed countries, yeah, not yeah. just in Kenya, yeah. you know, the lending rates are much more appetizing to banks than it is in in developed markets. Mm-hmm. Sorry, um, the lending rate yeah. in Kenya, for example, you remember what the conversation we were having about hey, uh, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe ah. and sixty percent. You see, Kenya we are currently playing at around twelve percent. Okay, yeah. so in developed countries, you know, you might not get this. You probably yeah. get even yeah. 5%, five percent, even ten percent, two percent. Yeah, right? two, two. Yeah, so that's that's my more appetizing for 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 banks and you mm. know than it is for. It shows. You see, in the in the in the bosses abroad, yeah, in Europe. Banks are not the most performing bank um, companies. You come to Africa, banks. Yes. NSC yeah. specifically, Safaricom and the big banks, as, as, yeah. as the cliche yeah. as yeah. it goes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so the interesting thing, even to what you've mentioned, because uh, yeah. if you're to look at in Europe, their return on assets is 0.16%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, their return on equity is at 2.75%. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then their return on capital is 3.1%. Yeah. Then compared to Africa, uh, return on asset. Um, 0.88 percent, which is uh, higher, but not too high. But yeah. then the return on equity for Africa is 9.39 percent. That's quite, high. That, that's that's yeah. significant compared to 2.7. Oh, 9. what? 9.39 on average. Still. Compared to 2.7 in Europe. Yeah. And yeah. then return on capital we are at 11.3, 11.03 percent. No, that's interesting. And then Europe is at 3.1 percent. Latin America is the other one that seems. I think it's a developing. Yeah, it's most of most While of most of the countries there are nation, de- developing nations. Yeah, yeah, because Latin America as well, um, the return on equity is ten point four nine, which is higher than Africa's mm. average return on equity. Wow! And then their return on capital is also twelve point one one percent. Is mm. there has Southeast Asia been picked out as a subcontinent? Um, I'd love to know that, Asia and also the Middle East. Yes, so there's Asia Pacific, mm-hmm. which excludes China and Japan. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, so China and Japan have been taken as their own. <laughs> hey, they would be yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> and then there's Asia Pacific. Those are outliers. Um, yeah. Then even Europe. Yeah. It, it's Europe, and then the Central and Eastern Europe. Yeah. So I think Russia, ah. yo, Kazakhstan. These Western Europe then, boys must always eh, <laughs> put themselves in their own place. Eh? Yeah. Then there's Middle East, North America, and Latin America. Ah, yeah. So right now it looks like if you're interested in backing stocks like globally, yeah. probably look at, of course, African, like if in Kenya, yeah. your equities uh, at KCBs yeah. are doing well. So And you can also go to South America. Yeah, know, go to South Peru, America. Yeah. <laughs> That's a place to be. But you know what, Kalia, when, when you're saying, the, when you've just been saying this, it sparked, um, it sparked a conversation, you know, I'm looking at people who run businesses globally mm. okay on on a, and 
not even globally per se We're yeah. talking continentally yeah. okay multinationals do you know i've just realized how for example as you were saying the return on equities mm-hmm. they sound tantalizing the one in africa yeah but then come to think of it if you are running a business in the whole of africa you have a business that operates in virtually all the countries in africa yeah. it's far much tougher than it is in europe yeah because in europe there's you know why or, or, or in other parts of the continent not not just about infrastructure yes infrastructure is one yeah. thing let me start with that because look at infrastructure so if you were to buy a vehicle that would be transporting your goods here in africa yeah. it's gonna last it's gonna be efficient and work well for probably five years but then if it was in europe it would probably go for 10 years why because of the roads and everything number two you're dealing with you see the way africa is it's big yeah. 55 states i think that's where we are at the moment mm-hmm. 55 states but then you're dealing with different laws different jurisdictions sometimes very small countries you know in in in, in the eyes of imagine cr- crossing you've just crossed uh rwanda you've just crossed burundi you've just so crossed true. uganda you just crossed kenya a very small region but then you're dealing with different jurisdictions different the tax laws. regimes mm-hmm. different laws things are different labor laws you know it's it's a bit tricky and then you come now to the instability of these countries so if you are running a business that you that is in the whole of africa you've already experienced two coups in the in, in this year <laughs> you've already seen one in guinea you've already seen one in sudan okay yeah, yeah. you've already seen the the what has been happening in mali yeah. you that's what you've just seen the disruptions that are there it's not easy but it's worth it how is it worth it i don't think okay yeah, you get sweet returns yeah that's why like you're yeah. charging it's essentially you're getting a premium for for, for the for all, this tra- for all yeah. the troubles yeah so you're getting a premium here but again to speak to what you just said um when you compare these two the difference is so big and it's so glaring because in in europe there are systems again yeah the yeah. system once you once you a tram is a tram it doesn't matter you know you come to <laughs> africa you have to i don't know when you're getting to tanzania now you have to try to drive on outside of the road <laughs> you have to deal with i don't know kina who kina laws these african countries yeah. truth be said they are they're, they're bribes to be given you don't there's a lot there's a lot even language barrier mm-hmm. yes so those are uh, you see you're making my fact. point yeah, yeah i get you i get you totally <laughs> yeah um and then and it will take us quite some time to get to of course point, so yeah. absolutely then one i think one last thing now that we're in the bank space yeah and then the i think there's the interaction between telcos and the banking space with what yes. you're saying i'm sure yeah, yeah. of course for lisa yeah. Yeah. and in, so airtel in, in, Uganda, can, airtel. in nigeria yeah. so uh, yeah. mtn and airtel. yeah in nigeria airtel and mtn were given licenses yeah. by the central bank yeah. um to open um it's some sort of financial bank, or something, yeah, yeah some financial that is going to be regulated by the central bank so the competition that's coming is going to be and this yeah. comes at the backdrop of um, Nigeria launching the e-naira mm-hmm. yes yeah we are also yes. um, i'm 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 waiting really eagerly to see you know how that's going to fit into that space yeah yeah what did they say it was for they said it was for was it to curb uh black market trade of oil products uh, i i just think i mean africa and particularly nigeria being you know the the the, the leader yeah. the mm-hmm. economic leader in in africa yeah. there's a lot that goes on you know in terms of um off cash transactions okay and now this is remember this is a central bank digi- central bank backed digital currency yeah, yeah. so it's just uh, like just money is going virtual <laughs> is it fiat then if it's backed by a central bank i mean it's just a normal currency like it's just that now it's on it's on it's a digital it's, yeah it's digital yeah. yeah so it's not like uh, there many people there has been a it lot of perception that, that yeah they are, that the nigerian government has launched a cryptocurrency so it's not a in, es, in essence it's not a cryptocurrency it's not a cryptocurrency okay. uh, it's still in its early stages we are still you know a lot of information is also ab- about to come and everything and how it's yeah. being received in the yeah. market so it's still a new space but we're watching that out for you closed yeah. we'll keep you up to date so yeah so i think for telcos it's something that they'll look at and i think also more regulators in africa are going to look at that mm. and so i think there's a bigger opportunity for telcos to like even grow bigger um yeah so that's the interesting 
into finance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're jumping to stock of the week. Stock yeah. of the week. This I don't know should have come into the highlights like things that have happened over the week. Twiga raising Series C uh, and they're targeting 1 billion valuation in the next five years. Oh. So they, wow. USD. You know there was, was a time it, USD, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> there was a time I went to Twiga's uh, website and saw you know one of the people who are uh, funders and, and the likes and partners and I saw gold man sucks. <laughs> yes. You know I removed my glasses for a bit <laughs> to just see if it's uh, yeah. you're, you're yeah. such an African. <laughs> so they could be the first Kenyan unicorn yeah. uh, which would be a Safaricom is a unicorn. No, but not from like they didn't start up as a startup, like receiving funds from venture oh, capitalists okay. in that yeah. sense. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't the model per se. Yeah. Plus, yeah. you see, you don't get people looking for Series C funding every day. It's a big deal. We should have talked about it. It's a little more. bit more common. We are talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, more. I said more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the interesting thing, it's it looks like the investors just trust in in them uh, we should actually look at. I mean, it the too. idea, the idea, the idea, the idea is the idea funds. is great. Tell you what, the idea is great. The first time I came across the trigger concept, how yeah, they are running their yeah, things, yeah. tell you what, simple, it blew my mind. Because yeah. it's, I asked myself, how comes I never saw this? Okay, <laughs> you know, and, and it, the growth strategy is, is know, the one so that, that yeah. <laughs> somebody wants to take a swipe at me. <laughs> I mean, the, the growth strategy for me is, yeah. is, is, is something that I liked. So for most of our viewers who may not know about Twiga, so just to give a backstory a, a bit yeah. so that they understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what Twiga does essentially is in the Kenyan market, especially, you know, in 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 the estates where people live, there yeah. are people called mamambogas. Yeah. Now what mamambogas do is they sell vegetables, you know, it's it's a grocery store, so to mm -hmm. speak. Yeah. So these women, they wake up very early. Most of them are women. They wake up in the morning go to uh for example in kenya in, in nairobi you have marikiti okay mm -hmm. the market they go buy whether it's bananas it's wall it's avocados you know fruits and everything and they bring them so they they you have to rise up very early you know to catch yeah. the, the the best of products the at the market <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. so you come with the products and then you start selling yeah. Yeah. but then there there is an issue there is one standardization which has been a big issue Okay, so today you go find good uh, bananas, tomorrow you don't find good bananas, okay? There's no, so what, what, there's no standard. standardization. So what Twiga are doing, in fact, Twiga have actually, I, th um, I think that they launched, if not in the pipeline, the biggest banana ripening plant in Africa. Mm -hmm. So what, the, what Twiga have that. been doing is, something about that. They've, been, they've been filling that gap, okay? Mm -hmm. So what they do is that they sign up farmers, yeah. So they walk the journey with farmers, okay, this, these are the kind of products we need, these are the standards we want, and then they go sell to the, to these mama burgers and everything. That's how they Directly, started, yeah. okay? Yeah. So, and the thing was, they do free delivery. Mm -hmm. So this mama burger doesn't have to wake up at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. to, to go, go to, to the market, market and everything. Yeah. Things will come to you. Yeah. And then it's far much better prices and... Okay, that can be debatable. I mean, but it's better prices. Um, this is because I've had a bit of interaction with them. Yeah. And also, apart from products are standardized and yeah. it's timely. You are sure you'll get, you know, sometimes you could go to Marigiti and you miss out. Oh, there are no avocados. Yeah. For mm -hmm. there, I mean, you're guaranteed that stuff will be coming in. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah. a good flow. There's yeah. a good supply. Reliable and now they've like, moved, yeah. they moved into the, pro the space where, um, you see the shops and the kiosks in the estates. Yeah, yeah. So what they did is that, they supply them yeah. with this stuff. So they go yeah. to the factories, yeah. buy at factory prices, yeah. then cut out the middle men mm -hmm. and women, <laughs> yeah. and then sell it to, to, the, to the kiosks directly. Yeah. So what they're doing is now, they're doing free deliveries. That's another thing that's, that's good. So you don't have to go to the wholesalers in town, you know, close your shop to buy mm -hmm. these things, then you go back. No, yeah. they'll just bring it to you. And then they, they, have a, they, they have a credit facility. I saw at a time they partnered with Pezesha, which mm -hmm. is a fintech. Yeah, you know, yeah. So if you don't have the money, you know, and we, we, you see you, people normally pay with Lipa 9% and everything, you have records, so mm -hmm. they use that to, to, to give you credit. Now something that really, this is now their growth strategy that was impressive in my opinion, is the fact that first of all, I think they've gone, they, they're now, in, they're now out, outside Kenya. Mm -hmm. You know, they've gone to the East African market. Yeah. The thing is now, you see the way they, they give, they sell sugar and, and rice and other commodities to these kiosks and shops. Mm -hmm. What they did is that Twiga now has its own rice. 
So they stopped buying at factory prices at the From price factories now to sell to these guys okay mm. so for yeah. them now they just process their own oh, and okay. then okay. sell directly okay. you see the potential that there yeah. is you know yeah. they could they could occupy the whole value chain <laughs> yeah. absolutely yeah. so i mean it's interesting if you are an investor and you know you'd get to interact with that model and everything you know me i'm just saying it paraphrasing and the likes but then yeah. you, when they break it down to you i mean I'd, i'd give them the money i'd give them my money <laughs> and that's why they inv- yeah that's they why actually they don't they don't struggle with so yeah, yeah. Yes. because because their series b was in 2019 how long did that take um it, i think it was very quickly as well yeah um and they've gotten so totally like to date they've raised one, 157 million dollars yeah um so that's 1.5 b about yeah yeah which is not 1.6. little 1.6. yeah it's not little money and then they've had 23 investors Uh, who've invested wow. in them that's quite Over diverse the, huh? yeah which includes people like goldman sachs yeah, yeah. they have yeah. afc i've seen the in the mix um big um, names eh? yeah and the catalyst dob equity which is a family run uh pe wow. fund um, is um the british uh nini in play who cdc yeah um i haven't seen them yet oh. so i'm not too, too sure whether they they brought the, the funds yet. the funds yet so Yeah, I think it's a good Kenyan story uh in the space. I think it's encouraging for startups. Absolutely. Um to continue uh that there is money, there, there is, is money yeah, out here. You'll get the money. Yeah, there's potential of, for growth um if the business model is good. Um yeah, so I think that was a, ah. I just lead it in. <laughs> <laughs> Dope.